for giving me the chance. Here we go. Thank you so, so much for giving me the chance to chat. Um, don't tell anyone else, but secretly our favorite students are math undergrads. And so I always love the opportunity to chat about this program with uh, undergraduate students for mathematics. So um, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I have, I put together just a little presentation to talk about the program. Um, and let me see, make sure I get this right. Okay. Does that work? Okay, wonderful. You never know. Okay. <laughs> well, th thanks again. I'm going to start just a, with a quick introduction. My name is Laura, and I'm the Associate Director of the Master of Science in Quantitative and Computational Finance Program at Georgia Tech, um, which, as I know, is a, a very long and complicated title, but I'll break that down in a moment. Um, with my team, I oversee kind of everything related to prospective student recruitment, academic advising, program operations, pretty much everything that doesn't involve career services. And we have an excellent career services team uh, that handles that kind of stuff. So, and I'll talk about them in a bit. Um, so again, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I put together just kind of a little presentation of highlights. I normally have to have an hour long in, in info session that I do regularly once a month, but I kind of truncated it down to about maybe 20 minutes and then I can leave time for questions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and dive in. Um, what is this program? Like what in the world is it? QCF is an odd acronym. I know it's not like MBA. Everyone knows what an MBA is, but what in the world is QCF? We basically say that with our program, we are going to teach students a very strong foundation of quantitative skills for complex mathematical modeling, which is where math students fit in quite nicely. We will also teach students the computational skills so that you can implement those models through statistics and programming. And all of that is done within an understanding of an applications to finance, um, understanding how these financial institutions work and how the financial markets work so that you can uh, implement these models to predict shifts and changes in the financial markets um, and go and, and help these institutions. And uh, so we, if you when you boil it down into one sentence, we can kind of say that we are data science for finance. Um, we may even be rebranding a little bit to be AI for finance. Uh, our faculty director is big on AI and his lab does a lot of research in that space. And so we plan to even pivot and offer more AI for finance uh, material going forward. We're actually uh, reworking one class to do that. So um, basically data science for finance, we're math, we're programming, we're statistics, we're engineering, we're all of these things kind of in one interdisciplinary uh, topic. And as such, our program is interdisciplinary at Georgia Tech. So we have faculty that teach from our business school, our school of mathematics, and our school of industrial and systems engineering. I almost argue we have a fourth informal partner in our college of computing, just because so many of our students also take computing electives. Um, but it is an, it, because it's an interdisciplinary topic, it was very important when this program was bega began um, back in 2001. So it's actually been around a really long time. It was important to the faculty member that because it's an interdisciplinary subject that it be interdisciplinary in nature at Georgia Tech. So um, we're very lucky to have participation from multiple colleges. Uh, I want to highlight some of our just kind of our program rankings. Uh, we're currently ranked number 12 in risk.net uh, in their quant finance master's guide for 2023. Um, that's a global ranking. So we're actually ranked ninth among US universities. And if you boil that down even further and kind of and 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 look at some of the metrics. Uh, we have the third highest starting salary among top U.S. universities as well in that ranking. Um, there's a very common ranking called QuantNet. We actually moved up to number 12, and I forgot to update that on the slide. Where we actually also moved up to number 12 in North America's, uh, or excuse me, in QuantNet's North America ranking of financial engineering programs. Um, to clarify, uh, we are kind of umbrellaed under the heading of financial engineering. So there are multiple programs that have similar uh, education, but we're all called different things. So some are called financial mathematics, some are called financial engineering. Uh, we are quantitative and computational finance, uh, but we're all umbrellaed under that category of financial engineering. And then we're currently ranked number 13 in the TFE Times as well. Um, so we've been hot. It's, I've been with this program 10 and a half years, and we have consistently in the 10 and a half years that I've been with the program ranked in the top 15 uh, in all of these rankings. So we're very excited about that. Um, in terms of the curriculum and what you can anticipate to learn, 
Um, we have 12 total classes that make up the degree. Six of those classes are what we consider core classes. And again, they're taught from the three participating home units of the college. So um, these are kind of the core foundations of quantitative finance. You have finance and investments, stochastic processes in finance, numerical methods in finance, fixed income securities, derivative securities, and the design and implementation of systems for computational finance. These are sort of, again, those core classes that are going to give you the traditional core foundations of what you need to know and how the models are used in quantitative finance. And then we have what we call targeted electives. We have three uh, that were custom designed for this program, and we ask you to choose two of them. So we have a management of financial institutions. That class is the one that's being reworked as AI for finance. Uh, we have data mining and statistical learning and financial optimization models. Um, I always highlight this management of financial institutions, even though it's being reworked as an AI for finance class. It's taught by our faculty director, Dr. Sudhir Chava. Um, it, he's really big on giving a lot of project work. So there's about one project due a week in that class. Um, and I anticipate it'll be the same when it's reworked. Um, and he gives what, what's really interesting about Dr. Chava is that he tries to bring in the latest technologies that are being used in the industry to the classroom. And, it, and why is that important? Well, first, students start off that very early in doing some of these projects. And so it's really good when you go out into your internship interviews. There's a lot of good meaty material to talk about about in those interviews and then oh it's saying my it, connection is unstable so if it and then doctor and then it's really good again when it, it, companies like to see this kind of cutting edge work that's happened so when you do some of these projects and some of these classes and you're able to put them on your resume it can make your resume set, stand apart a little bit from some of the other uh people that might be applying to uh some of the jobs and i'll talk a lot about the career side in a moment um but anyway so we have these these targeted electives classes that were custom designed for this degree. And then we have a capstone class. It's an experiential learning class. We typically have companies that partner with Dr. Chavez Financial Services Lab. And those companies um, also contribute projects for the capstone. So typically the companies come in and they'll do that kind of a pitch of the project ideas. And then the students will submit their preferences for which projects they might like to work on. And they get paired to work with these company mentors, if you will, throughout the semester. And then at the end, um, they will give a presentation. So we've had uh, in the past companies like the Intercontinental Exchange, Voya, Bank of America, um, uh, um, Invesco have been partners and have been uh, working with the students uh, in the capstone projects. And so it's a really good way. A lot of like some of the projects are either real world problems they're facing or, for example, like when I saw Voya's uh, group, they tasked two different um, student groups to develop a trading strategy. And one of the one of the student groups actually did really, really well. And Voya decided to actually adopt that trading strategy into their daily operations and continue to work on it. So um, pretty cool, pretty, pretty interesting. And then um, finally, we have what we call free electives. And this is something that sets us our program apart from some of the others that, that are out there. We want to give you the opportunity to also take classes that you think are interesting academically or what you think will help prepare you professionally for what you want to do. Uh, so we have students that go to our College of Computing and take things like deep learning, high performance computing, computational data analysis, um, regression and time series analysis is really important. There's a really solid foundation of quantitative finance, those techniques. And so those are really good electives. Um, our business school has interesting electives. Dr. Chava, again, teaches our FinTech Ventures and Cryptocurrencies class. That one's pretty popular. Um, um, we have entrepreneurial finance and private equity. There's a valuing technology firms class. There's a lot of interesting courses there. And then uh, School of Mathematics. Uh, we have students that will take stochastic processes too or partial differential equations. Um, mathematics is such an integral part of, of quantitative finance, especially in preparing for uh, interviews for some of these roles. And, and so we have some students that might want to brush up on their math and do that. We also have just a PhD track. So I would argue maybe 96% of the students that do our program end up going directly from our program into industry. Uh, but sometimes, uh, once in a while, one, every cohort, we may have one or two students that want to go into a PhD. And so we also have the ability to allow students to take PhD in finance classes. 
um, things like asset pricing, corporate finance, et cetera. It's a good way to dip your toe in the water to see if the PhD environment is right for you or not, especially if you're interested in a PhD in finance. Um, but we also have a, an alum from our program that's in our PhD in machine learning program. We have one that's in our, P we have two actually, that one just got admitted to our PhD in electrical and computer engineering. So this is also potentially a path way to PhD, although I would say, again, about 96 or 7% of our students go directly into the financial industry or the finance industry after graduation. Uh, one of our alums, Mike Hardesty, he's a, a VP of Multi-Asset Strategies and Solutions at BlackRock. That's in their San Francisco office. He said, I was exposed to a wide range of topics at Georgia Tech, including risk management options, numerical methods. Obviously, Georgia Tech didn't teach me how to do my job, but instead it gave me the vocabulary and framework needed for just about any conversation. So um, I love that he said that. I think that what we do a really good job of is teaching you all of the tools so that you can then take it and, and apply, uh, apply that in a real world setting. So I want to talk a little bit that I love, I love talking about this building. It's the building. And I'm not there now. I'm actually working from home today, but uh, my office is located in this building. It's called Coda Tech Square. Um, if you're ever in Atlanta and uh, please let me know, and I'm happy to give you a tour of the building. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, it's, it was, the design of the building is to be the intersection between Georgia Tech and industry in the spaces of technology and analytics. And we are one of three academic programs on the entire Georgia Tech campus that was actually selected to have a space in the building. So we have this beautiful graduate lounge on the 16th floor of the building, and our students have 24-hour access. Um, the building is, again, two, it's two towers, and it's joined in the center by what is now considered to be the world's tallest continuous spiral staircase. So you can see in the picture on the left, um, it goes from floor five all the way through to floor 21. It's really impressive. Um, and every three floors has an entirely different decorative theme. So pictured here is our indoor garden. There's another game room. There's actually a pool table that students can use 24 hours a day. Um, there's uh, a rooftop on the 20th floor with a gorgeous view of campus and downtown Atlanta. Uh, pictured in the bottom right is our actual graduate lounge that our students um, can use and have, again, access 24 Four hours a day. And if you were to pivot the camera, there are interview rooms and individual workstations as well in our graduate lounge. So it's a really, really beautiful space. Um, definitely worth a visit if you're in Atlanta. And then at the bottom of the building is a food hall. So there's five food vendors and a bar as well. Um, so it's very, very, very interesting building. And, and we got, I don't know how we, we pulled the lucky straw, but we got to have a space in the building. There's even a kitchen. Uh, so students can come and bring bring food with them. And if they have to study late night, uh, that's convenient. So, so that's our CODA building. One of the things I love to highlight about our program is sort of the sense of community that we try to build. Um, one of the things I, I, I didn't really address is that this is considered a professional master. And so um, we operate very similarly in, to like an MBA program where, yes, it's about completing these classes to earn the degree, but equally as important is our efforts to help you with your career search. Um, we, we, we have full career services support for all of our students in finding internships as well as full-time jobs after graduation. Um, and one of the ways I think, or one of the things that's a, maybe a bit unique about our program is kind of the sense of community. We keep our class size a little bit on the smaller side in comparison to our peers. So we have, so there are some schools like Columbia, I think. They, they will admit 150 students or 200 students into their programs. And we just find that it's a better best practice for us to really keep the class size a little bit manageable on the smaller side. We usually enroll maybe 50 to 70 students every fall term and maybe 20 to 30 each spring term. Um, so we do fall and spring admission. Um, and we keep the class size small so that everybody gets personal attention. You get one-on-one -on -one academic advising. More importantly, you get one-on-one -on -one career advising. So you will be, you, there's an advisor that sits down with you and I'll talk more about them in a minute. Um, but it's really, I think, really important when you're assessing professional master's programs to look at not only, of course, the quality of the academic material, but really to look at the support you're going to get from the career uh, career services, what kinds of alumni network and, and resources that uh, you'll gain on that side of things too. And then it allows our faculty to give these very coding intensive projects if you have a, if they have a small a little bit smaller of a class without having to rely on an 
army of teaching assistants. And so we love to keep the class size small, our staff, our faculty, our corporate relations team, we really, really pride ourselves in trying to get to know each and every student as an individual um, and feel like, you know, a safe space for, for students to come to us uh, for anything that they may need. Um, this is uh, pictured here as one of our alums. His name is Mahir Shah. He said, we learn a lot from each other. We're working collaboratively rather than competitively. Um, he's currently a fixed income portfolio analyst at Wellington Management up in Boston. One of the really cool things about this program is that everybody is coming from different academic backgrounds because it's interdisciplinary, but it's also made up of interdisciplinary undergrad majors. So we have students that studied all kinds of engineering, um, mathematics, obviously, and applied mathematics, statistics, computer science. We have people that studied finance and economics. Um, and so what's really cool is when you you bring all these people together from different interdisciplinary backgrounds and you put them to, in groups together to do projects, odds are that you're maybe what you're maybe hopefully you'll be paired with someone whose strength is your weakness and vice versa. And so there's a lot of like kind of dynamic peer to peer learning um, along with this program. And because the students are learning from each other, they tend to develop close relationships with each other. Um, and, and then I always tell the story. There were uh, there were eight guys. I remember this clear as day a couple years, several years ago now, these eight guys and they all wanted to graduate and go to New York City, right, to pursue their careers. And wouldn't you know, every last one of them ended up in New York City. So they all of the eight, all eight of them moved to New York together. They are still friends to this day. They still come to our alumni events uh, when we go to when we go up to New York and visit. And so it's just really cool. Um, speaking of alumni events, we do uh, industry treks and alumni events every single year. Each year we go to New York and Chicago. So in um, spring last year, we did a trading trek. We're actually going to move that to fall, I think, this year. Uh, but last year we went to Belvedere Trading, Chicago Trading Company, IMC Trading, DRW Holdings. Um, when we did our fall New York trek, we went to JP Morgan, Tower Research Capital, Barclays, Ballyasney Asset Management, Millennium Management, Goldman Sachs, and did an alumni happy hour uh, all in two days. <laughs> it was exhausting, but it was really exciting. We get to go to these companies. We get to learn what it is that they do. We usually have alums from our program kind of facilitate a little bit and, and talk about their day-to-day -day role. Um, and it's great exposure for not only our brand, but also for you. Um, JP Morgan, in fact, when we go there for our industry treks, they're really serious about it. We send a resume book ahead of time and they look through the resumes and they actually have the students, they, they split them out in alphabetical order and they actually have their company executives come in and grill them. So the students don't know that it's actually kind of an interview and the students that ask really good questions and have these really good round table discussions are often get an online assessment um, for an, uh, an online coding assessment the next day or, or later that week. Um, and so they pay attention. So these industry tracks are really good exposure for our students. Um, and then we as a staff also go to like Boston, Charlotte, San Francisco. We've, we've, we've connected with uh, our alumni in Miami even uh, to, to try and continue um, to create opportunities for our alums to, to stay engaged and hopefully send jobs back our way. We just had 30 of our alumni volunteer to do technical mock interviews with our students, which is just unbelievable. So we have we have an alumni network that's that's over 20 years old, a thousand plus strong, um, and they're really, really supportive and, and dedicate a lot of their own time to our program. Talking quickly about the career support, we have a corporate relations team and they uh, work to develop a career strategy and identify job search targets with each and every student. They will sit down and have a conversation. What do you want to do? What companies are you targeting? What skills do you have? And how do we get you prepared? And then we do a whole series of workshops at the beginning of the program. Everything from we fly a guy in to do a presentation skills workshop, the LinkedIn guys and optimating your LinkedIn profile. Uh, we do we talk about salary negotiations. We once had a student that had six offers that had to negotiate salary between six different different offers. And so that stuff becomes important. Hopefully the markets will be more robust <laughs> um, going forward. And then um, we have an employer relations person that is out there scouring all the websites, LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, all of those for opportunities. She's connecting with recruiters. We send resume books out once a month. Um, she, We just had a representative from Bank of America on campus this morning doing a seminar with our students. Um, we had DRW Holdings come a couple weeks ago or uh, DRW Trading Holdings Trading Firm. Um, so we we try to continue again to engage industry uh, to look at Georgia Tech's program as uh, you know for for their quant talent. 
So what are our graduates doing? Most go into the finance industry in various sectors, investment and commercial banks, exchanges, government or regulatory agencies, asset management firms, hedge funds, prop trading firms, fintech firms, consulting firms primarily. Um, these are just some common employers. I'm not going to read the list to you, but you can see there um, some of the your, your, your larger bulge bracket banks, some of your top hedge funds, trading firms, et cetera, will hire from us as well as consulting firms. And then we have some students that may go into other industries in the finance or tech departments of technology companies, maybe insurance companies, maybe once some, maybe energy sometimes, but by and large, most students are going into the finance industry. They're doing things like financial product development, derivative securities valuation, portfolio um, strategies, trading of securities, financial modeling, um, and different kinds of roles. You know, there's a quant analyst roles. You can be a quant researcher, a quant trader, and go to sales and trading, portfolio management down the road once you get experience, risk management, consulting, data science. These are just some uh, typical roles or designations uh, within the field of quant. And then finally, the good stuff. So um, from our fall 2022 graduates, we just had our fall 23, um, and I have it, I can talk about it in a minute, but I'll I'll give you the 22 stats. 91% um, of our students were employed by graduation with 97% employed as of March 15, 23. The average base comp was just shy of 120,000. The average total compensation was $147,680. And we had a record-breaking compensation from a Georgia Tech undergrad student who studied mathematics. Um, who had no full-time work experience, came to do our program, graduated, went to a prop trading firm, and ended up with a compensation of 410000 Now, that's not typical, uh, but it can happen. Um, math students do really well in this field. Um, average sign-on on relocation was just over 15000 in the cities of employment, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Charlotte, Miami, and these were the hiring companies, Susquehanna International Group, PGIM, Dimensional Fund Advisors, Millennium Advisors, Millennium Management, Sean Feld, BNP Paribas, Barclays, Bank of America, EY and ICE. And then 88% of, we had 88% employment in summer internships. For spring 23, 96% were employed by within three months of graduation, and we're at 100% now. The average comp was 116, average total comp 130, highest comp was 220. Still nothing to sneeze at. Cities of employment, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Miami, and these were the hiring companies. So very similar, Tower Research, City, PNC, Calamos Investments, and so on. Um, our fall 23 group, I just got the stats. Let me see if I can just like quick pull them up on my phone. If I can do it quickly, I will. Uh, she just sent them over to me right before I joined. Um, nope, I'm not gonna be able to find it quickly. But we were at 96% again, um, as of three three months post graduation. And the statistics look very similar. Um, I would say there's, it's a, almost a carbon copy of what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, so uh, it, cities of employment, some people are worried that if they come to Atlanta, they're going to be pigeonholed to the city. That's not true. 27% um, of our students stayed in Atlanta last year after graduation. But as you can see, 73% went all over. So we have people that go to New York, to Chicago, to Boston, to Charlotte, to Pittsburgh, to Miami, all over. So um, that's the nice thing is we've been around a long time and we have alums all over the country and we do a pretty good job of, of placing students where they want to end up. Um, Malik said the career services team supported me um, through writing my resume, interview prep, career yeah. fairs, and evaluation of my offers. I thought I knew what I was doing when I came in, but boy, was I wrong. The team was great through multiple resume revisions, mock interviews to prepare for the behavioral and technical interviews and empowering me to not settle for the first offer, but to continue to interview and negotiate for what I deserved. And uh, uh, Malik is a uh, he also played football while he did our program, which blows my mind. Um, but he was he's now a senior associate with Flexport Capital. I'm gonna just very quickly, we're a STEM degree. Um, very our application process, online application, upload unofficial transcripts. That part that other piece doesn't apply. Um, GRE or GMAT score, we will waive if you have a 3.7 GPA or above or a PhD degree, but that wouldn't be you. Um, so if you have a 3.7 GPA or above, we will waive that GRE or GMAT requirement. So that's a huge incentive. TOEFL wouldn't be applicable. Um we ask you to upload a copy of a resume, three letters of recommendation, and I do just a quick 30 minute behavioral interview with candidates just to make sure that you are interview ready enough to go start interviewing for some of these employers that we have great relationships with uh, to make sure that you'll represent yourself in the program well. Finally, application deadlines. Um, we're coming up on our uh, May 1st really is the deadline. If anybody is actually graduating this 
spring and is interested maybe in applying for fall, May 1st will be your target deadline by which you want to apply, but it's at really June 1st, but we say May 15th just to make sure that we have plenty of time. And if you're graduating in December, we also do spring admission. So we have a September 1st standard round deadline there and the app will cut off on October 15th. Um, I am always, always, always happy to uh, schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment if any of you are actually interested in learning more about the program and you want to talk about your own specific candidacy. So feel free to reach out to me anytime. This is my personal email or that info at QCF. That's the one on our website. Either one comes to me. And we have a LinkedIn and Instagram. So if you want to kind of follow our program activities, please feel free to do so. I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has questions. Have I got any questions? I know that was a lot of information and I sped through it kind of quickly. <laughs> well, feel free to reach out and to me directly. And I'm again, I'm always happy to, to chat anytime. So um, if, well, if you, you, said, uh, you said something about, uh, you made a point of saying this was like a professional master's, right? Mm -hmm. You distinguish yeah. that. So you're obviously distinguishing that for some reason. Yeah, so I would say like nine, even at Georgia Tech, 90% of our master's programs are going to have some sort of research or thesis component, or maybe they're just classes that you take to earn the degree, but a lot of them won't come with like the full scale career services support. Um, but we provide, in addition to obviously the academics, we do full career services support from soup to nuts. We, we are working with our students in the summer before they would even join the program on resume reviews and edits and trying to get everything ready to go. So it's a, you, you get sort of an intensive career boot camp along with the program. And these are skills that students take lifelong. I mean, these aren't just skills to get a job right out of the master's. These are just lifelong you know, career building skills and how to interview, both from a technical standpoint and a behavioral standpoint. So we do, we work very closely with students. We have a lot of speakers, company information sessions, employer networking nights, all kinds of career related activities so that we can help guide you to figure out A, what you want to do professionally and B, to get prepared to do that as well. <coughs> Other questions? Well, all right. Well, you have my information and um, I will I will go ahead. I know there's another another presentation behind me, but thanks so, so much for your time and for giving me the platform and opportunity to chat. I really, I really appreciate it. Let's thank our speaker. Wonderful. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Bye bye. And so. Um, let's see if I so I guess I probably won't turn this off. You got it. Well, if there's somebody on, I can share that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can be me. How about that? All right. Uh, well, without further ado, I give you Dr. Ellen Brazell. She's going to talk to us about uh, the data science, yeah, data science uh, here at SNSS. And the rumor is there's a, we're actually rolling out an undergraduate degree in uh, okay. data science as well. So, yeah. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> And it sounds a little bit like oh, I'm in the chipmunk stuff here. Though. I'm doing the best I can. So, um, and as I talk, it will get better because this is what class was like for me yesterday. <laughs> um, so, uh, as Dr. Portugal said, my name is Ellen Brazil, and I am my longest, my, the longest title is Assistant Director in Data Science Online Education and Outreach, um, which just means that we have two academic programs here, here in SMSS now for data science, and I help coordinate with programs. Um, the first one is the data science, uh, master's in data science and analytics program, which I will talk about. And yes, we have a bachelor's degree that will start in the fall. But I thought it might be helpful for you guys, because I know some of you are undergraduates and we may have some graduate students here as well, to, um, to kind of talk to you a little bit about data science within the school and just and within the university and some resources that may be helpful for you, um, even if you're not interested in pursuing a master's degree. We'll cover it all. Um, okay. 
So what is data science? Well, there are a lot of different definitions of data science. Um, this is the one we're using for the undergraduate program, which is, you know, we're all mathematicians, so we like Venn diagrams. Um, so uh, that is uh, the intersection between mathematics, statistics, and computer science, right? So, um, and I, there's another, there's a separate argument that this, there is also this kind of thing, which is mathematics and physics, computer science, and subject matter and expertise. So, um, you know, having your expertise in a particular application area um, that you can apply your knowledge. And you'll notice the middle of this Venn diagram says unicorn, right? So um, these people are not, they're a very high demand, um, but not necessarily a, easy to find, right? Um, it, it depends on the application area. Okay, <laughs> um, okay so data science at, uh, at the World Math and Stack. So we have a master's in data science and analytics program. It is 100% online. It's 100% online. It is a joint program between the School of Math and Stat and the Department of Management. So we are in two separate colleges, the College of Business and the College of Science. Um, it was developed, uh, we started summer of 2020. It was developed a couple of years before that um, to be uh, a master's program that interfaces with industry. So because we did that, um, we brought in industry to ask them what they want in graduate students of, of this nature. Um, and what, so they sort of helped um, tailor the curriculum. And we see ourselves as creating graduates that now, you know, for a few years, but particularly when data science just became a certain buzzword that everybody liked to say, um, you could look in a little bit now too, you can go look for jobs on math jobs or indeed.com or anywhere, wherever you want to find um, job postings, LinkedIn, whatever. And um, you could look at several different data science uh, positions and they will all be asking for different things, right? And and all be looking to for students that can, or potential employees that can do various different things. So the data science role is not streamlined. It's not like you're going to have the same job at several different years. All the data scientists do the same thing. So um, it's now starting to sort of level out. Those are, those are becoming more and more well-defined terms. Um, we are producing what we call data analysts, which I like to uh, call tra data translators, right? So you have one foot in the um, sort of statistic, the math side of things where you're developing models and you're looking at the data and you can do statistical number crunching, all that sort of thing. And then we have one foot um, in the business side and data management, but also management of people. And um, you're able to translate what these numbers mean to business, and I hesitate to say business, but um, business expertise. So, and that business can be a variety of different things. It can be government, it can be finance, it can be sports, it can be, I've just read an article in, uh, from ASA about people doing data science with ballerines. It can be just about anything um, you want. So, uh, so we are creating these graduates that are sort of straddling both of these worlds, right? <laughs> like I said, it was developed with input from industry partners. It is a 100% online program. It's 10 courses, which I'll show you in just a second. It's 10 courses, and um, it is not in thesis. But we do have optional emerging weekends. So uh, you, last year, we had a data science conference. That was in May. This year, we're looking to have a one-day um, uh, conference that will bring in an industry where um, we'll have speakers and um, things like that, and that, that will be in late week. Um, we operate with a cohort model, which means uh, we have summer-only um, admission, and the, all students begin with a boot camp class, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, all students begin with a boot camp class in the summer, um, and we did the cohort model because since it's online, we did not want it to be like Coursera from Clemson, right? We didn't want it to be like data science via my computer in my basement by myself, right? We wanted it to be as much of a collaborative Clemson on in-person experience that it could be while also being remote. Um, so we have these cohorts, they work typically, you know, they have their own Slack channels, they have their own you know, ways of communication, they're working with each other outside of class. All DSA classes are strictly for DSA students. And so, um, 
So all students are sort of following the same path. We do, however, have part-time and full-time paths. So full-time students take three courses per semester. We have two part-time paths where you can take two or one class classes per semester. So a lot of our students are working full-time while they also take this program. And so, um, so we have that flexibility. And it is an interdisciplinary approach, uh, which most data science programs at this point are. Um, but the reason we decided to do that, <clears throat> ours is a little bit different in that we straddle the business school. So it is different than the, usually the question I get is, how is this different from the MBA in business analytics? And the answer to that is we have more math, right? Um, it, it's a much more deeper dive into mathematics and statistics than the MBA in business analytics. Um, some of our students have actually done both, not many, but have done both um, the MBA in business analytics and our program. Um, ours is more of a balance between that business side and the, um, and the math and stats side. So here is the full time. There's a way to make it go away. There you go. Um, here is the full time path, which you can. These are all the same um, classes, regardless of full time or um, part time. So there are ten courses. The first one being the boot camp class. The boot camp class is somewhat self paced in that um, it has modules that you can work through. Um, there's an introduction to linear algebra, which you would all sail through, of course. Um, there's introduction to R and Python. So throughout the course of the program, students learn R, Python, SAS, Tableau, uh, SQL, non-SQL, and I'm sure a handful of, of others. Those are the major ones. Um, First fall, if you're full time, is Stat Methods One, which is taught in this school um, by Deborah Kunkel. Uh, statistical Computing, which is taught in this school by me. Um, and Analytics Application, which is taught from um, the Management Department. Analytics Application is um, is Python class. It, it's basically an intro to Python with um, applications to management. Uh, the spring is Statistical Methods 2, Advanced Mathematical Programming. Both of these are taught in, um, in our school. Um, Whitney Long teaches that Stat Methods 2, if any of you have had him. And um, uh, we just switched the instructor. I'll have to think about who the instructor would be at Mathematical Programming is. And then Data manager, uh, Management and Warehousing is taught in the Management Department. Um, and that's our SQL and non-SQL class. Uh, multivariate analysis is, of course, like stat methods three, right? Um, taught also by Whitney. And then business analytic, analytics project and managerial design uh, decision making are both in the management department. This is as close as we get to a capstone type experience, except for it's not an undergraduate capstone, it's a, it's a master's um, project. So we also um, pair with industry and university um, um, faculty and and businesses on campus and off that help our students work in groups and work through a data analytics project and, um, and actually sometimes two analytics projects. It's kind of like a consulting class. The students meet with the individuals, um, they meet amongst themselves, they have a management style, and then, um, and then they also work through everything they can um, for data analysis um, in either R or Python, whatever they choose. So um, like I said earlier, we now have a bachelor's in data science, which I affectionately call the DSBS. Um, and this is, I know all of you are, are, are set in mathematical sciences. This is so, that when you talk to potential students that are coming here, well, we do have some students that are gonna transfer in, um, but when you talk to students that are potentially coming to um, Clemson, you can mention that this is um, a possibility now. So it's our newest major, it's Clemson's, uh, newest major. It is um, starting in the fall of 2024. Um, graduates of the program will be prepared for future graduate study, of course, or immediately to industry um, to help companies with decision making through data. There are two programs in South Carolina um, that are bachelors of science in data science. One is at the College of Charleston, and this is the second one. The one in College of Charleston prides itself on being the first data science program in the country. It was established in 2003. Since then, it's been a while, since then, <laughs> um, there have actually been national consortiums to determine what a 
undergraduate program in data science should look like. Um, that consortium first um, began in 2016, and we followed those um, guidelines in order to create our undergraduate program. Um, and so that link can be found there. One of the things that makes ours completely unique and that most of undergraduate um, data science programs have application areas or emphasis areas, whatever people want to call them. Um, usually there's a short list of what those things can be, finance, biology, you know, there's a four or five different things. We have no limit as to what your application area should be. You are to take four classes. It is that, that Venn diagram, that second Venn diagram where we talked about domain expertise. It is trying to get at that. So it is four classes um, from any prefix on campus. When I say prefix, like STAT, MATH, those are our prefixes on campus. So you can do... Um, anything from finance and biology, physics, um, sports leadership, engineering, anything you choose. You can take uh, four classes in that application area. And then the idea is that you would use that expertise towards your capstone project. Um, and we all know data science is a big thing. So I don't need to <laughs> tell you that. So here's the idea of the breakdown of the undergraduate degree. Um, it does have, this, both of these are, of course, from our school. So the majority of the classes are taught in the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences. And this program lives in our school, um, as opposed to the master's degree that is in both. Um, so, you know, you know, the basics of mathematics or, the, or, or a good foundation of mathematics, Calc 1, 2, and 3, um, linear algebra, linear programming, discrete mathematical structures. And then, of course, the, a, a good foundation in statistics as well. Stat methods one and two, statistical computing, regression and time series, probability. Um, this course, these three courses right here, Intro to Data Science, Machine Learning, and the Capstone course, course are brand new courses. If you do not, all of you that are undergraduates, if you do not have a Global Challenges class um, already taken care of for your Gen Ed, Starting with fall, we are doing an introduction to data science course, and it is a global challenges class. It will be offered um, starting this fall. And so it is for anybody, whether it is if, whether you're in the uh, PSBS or not. Um, and it, the idea is to get anybody in any discipline exposed to what data science is, how they can apply it to their own discipline, and to have it just be really data science literate, right? How, how do I read an article and break it down a little bit and be I'm critical about what it says. Machine learning, you will see is in both computer science and um, statistics, and that's because they have to take two classes, one in the computer science department and one from a math perspective. So, um, And then, of course, the capstone, which will be very similar to um, a consulting class. We, we um, tend to, we will, we're planning to partner with industry and have data sets brought in and have students um, work on. Oh, and you'll see at the bottom here, they of, course, they of course have to do gen ed, just like every undergraduate program. But what you don't see in these three columns are things like um, not only technical writing, but there's also storytelling, ethics, communications. So um, we feel like it's really important for these students to have presentation skills, writing skills, data visualization skills, because it's not only important to be able to make the graph, but also make it so that um, others can understand it and, and visually feel it. So, so those are our two degree programs. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have about them. Um, but there are other resources on campus and throughout the school that if you're set on doing mathematics and not necessarily want to get a degree in data science, there are things on this campus where you are perfectly um, matched already as mathematicians and, and mathematical sciences majors um, to take advantage of these opportunities uh, so that you can better position yourself as, hey, I, I know some data science and I've, I've done these projects. The best thing you can do for future employment is to do, if you're interested in data science, is to do your own projects, right? Have a portfolio, have a data science portfolio ready to go that you can show that you're able to work with data and make um, logical conclusions from data. So, handful of things. Um, the DSA program, the Master's in Data Science and Analytics program, hosts a networking series called Industry Spotlights. You get a lot of emails from me um, called Industry Spotlights. This was the 
2020-2021 year. This is 21-22 year. And this was last year. I don't have the flyer for this year um, yet, but we have companies because it's online. We can have these companies from all over the world. We actually had somebody from Johnson & Johnson who lives um, in India do our, our talk in January. Um, and you're welcome to come. Any, anybody's welcome to come, but particularly mathematical sciences undergraduate and graduate students are welcome to come. Um, it gets you exposure to one, just talking to people from industry. Two, you see part of what they talk about is how they got there, right? How, how what, what path they took to get there, uh, what projects they're working on as much as they can tell us, right? When we had Michael Finney from Disney come, he had to like, you know, protect the innocent and like strip all of the different contexts out and make it in terms of Clemson Athletics instead of Disney because, you know, they have a lot of privacy. Um, more so than the other stuff. But um, so you get to learn about projects that they're working on. A lot of times they'll talk about internships that are available or future employment that's available from their company. And you get the chance to have, you know, a one on, you know, 20 audience um, with a person who's doing this kind of work in industry and ask them whatever questions um, you want to ask them. So I highly encourage you to come to those talks. We have a consulting center. How many of you know that Esme Sets has a consulting center? Oh, two. We have a consulting center. Um, and the consulting center in the School of Math and Stat um, is run by Joe Bible. And he, uh, uh, along with the other applied statistics um, faculty members, help people across campus. Its major purpose is to help people across campus with research with dissertations, if there's graduate students in another department that needs statistical methods for their dissertation, they can come to the consulting center. Occasionally there's some external um, projects that are there and they constantly need help. So it, you can imagine it's an exorbitant amount of time to work on these projects and they also have research projects that they're do, doing in classes that they're teaching and whatever. So even as an undergraduate, if you wanna go, um, to the consulting center, go to Joe and just say, hey, I, I just want to help out any way I can. You can sit in on meetings. Maybe you'll take a chunk of the project, work through some things, do a little bit of data management. You can put it on the resume and it helps the school out, but it also helps you out to help um, get that, um, those research um, ties flowing. Uh, any of you sports fans? I'm a big sports fan. It's KK. So um, a lot of my students, a lot of DSA students, um, want to go into sports uh, data science. It's a very hot topic thing. Um, there, there are opportunities, particularly for undergraduates. So, so some of my students do that. Some of my DSA students live here. They, they do class online, but they live here and they work for the athletic department. Um, Jason Alvadician, I think is how you say his name. Um, Jason and I have a relationship that he will send me when they're looking for people. They are currently looking for people to start in the summer and the fall for baseball and softball um, analytics students. So if you're interested in that type of thing, um, reach out. If you can either reach out to me and I will send you the link of the Google form to apply. Um, but it's it's this is specifically for right now they're looking for baseball and softball. Um, but we have students that do the DSA program and then work for them as well, and they go on to work for other sports organizations. So. There is a working group on campus called DAWG Dog. Now, I went to graduate school at the University of Georgia, and I don't like anything associated with Clemson called that, but um, it is the Data Anal and, and Analytics Working Group. It's mostly um, admit administrators and faculty that are in that group, but there's no reason that there can't be students in that group as well. They meet once a month and they have speakers come in and they are having a um, conference March 20th through the 21st um, at the Watt Center. And there's, uh, if you Google it, there's a link that you can go um, register for that. It's mostly about institutional research. A lot of, a lot of their topics are about institutional research. And what is institutional research? Well, we have a lot of data within the university about grades and how people flow through the university and what's the best traffic pattern and <laughs> all the different things that you data you can collect throughout the university and the students. And um, 
And so uh, institutional research does a, a lot of that. If you want to know, you know how many people switch majors from engineering to mathematical sciences, you can find that through institutional I put up two library resources here. Let's see if I can click on this. So if any of you are planning to do graduate work here, but I think they would probably take undergraduates as well, um, there's something called the Scholars Lab that's held through the library. The Scholars Lab is similar to the consulting center for, uh, but um, they don't just do analytics. They help students with any computing problem they have. So if you're proficient in R or Python or any computer language, um, they give presentations all over campus about what they can do, what resources they have. Um, and so they're constantly looking for, they create data visualizations for various groups on campus. Um, so they're constantly looking for, um, for help as well. And all of you would be um, aligned to help them. And particularly if you go on to do graduate work. And then I have, I don't think this is a link, but I can go find it. Watch this. Okay. So um, I don't know how many of you know, the library will keep, create what we call reference split, what they call ref list. Um, this is a, a, a library guide for the DSA program. But what's great about this is it's got all the things that you might want um, from the libraries in terms of data science. And one of those things is data sets and data resources and data sources. So there are all these data sources that you have access to because you're a Clemson student um, where you can get data. You need it for a project for class. If you need it just to play with data or whatever, we have all of these different. Now, CAD, well, everybody has access to. But there are several of these that you only have access to because you're part of an education organization. And so, um, so know that that's available to you as well. Where, 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 where did I go? I only have one more slide. Um, here to go. There it is. <laughs> Don't get whiplash. Okay. And if that's not enough, oh, yeah, if that's not enough, um, then you can go your own way, right? There are plenty. This is my list that I collect as, as I go and as I learn new things. Um, and I'm happy to share this list with you, but there are plenty of resources out there where you can do your own data science project. And some of these things are, um, you know, just basic, getting started. How do you do a data science project? How do you even get started? What do I, you know, most people get started by taking a data science project that's already out there and trying to recreate it, try to see if they can do it as well. And then they move from there. That, most of what statistics and data science is, is those questions, we get questions, we get questions, we get questions, right? We're never fully satisfied with the answers that we get. And so um, so just, you know, rolling up your sleeves and getting started is, is the best way to go. Some of these links are things like, you can learn Tableau on your own. Be careful, that's Pandora's box. So like, you can go down a rabbit hole of learning Tableau, but there are certifications of Tableau and you can continue to do that. University has access to SAS um, for free. Um, so if you're interested in learning SAS, they want to go into an industry that is going to only learn, uh, only use SAS. You can then also have free access to learn um, uh, the information to take the base certification exams, one of two base certification exams, or you can take SAT 40, 20, 60, 20, get course credit for it as well. So. That's all. A lot of things. If you're interested in the master's in data science and analytics program, I have a flyer for you that is um, is student facing, so it may answer some of the questions you have about that. But I'm happy to answer. Any questions? A lot. Okay. Um, and then I have. No, I'm just. I mean, I thought it was just 
fantastic. I mean, you all just moved up the charts so quickly after you started. Were you a little bit surprised by I that? I was very surprised. So we were we we're ranked number five by Fortune um, in our second year after having one class of data. So um, yes, I was very surprised. <laughs> That's pretty gracious. Yeah. That's and the and the second after congratulations, the second words out of Kevin James just asked were what are who are one through four and how do we beat them? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna bask in the glory at five for a minute and then we're gonna then we'll look. Um so yeah, but, so we are looking like a true chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're currently ranked number five. Uh, the rankings have not lost this year yet, but any other questions? All right, let's thank our speakers here. Uh, thank you for coming out, everybody. Next week's going to be interesting because we've got an undergraduate uh, doing a presentation on some research. Done. And so a lot of you, that'll be very interesting. You know, there'll be a time for question and answer, too. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be a fun way to kick off spring break. Other than that, y'all have a good weekend, and we'll see you next week. Oh, and the rule of math.